I am, I am so grateful that, that Adonai's love for us is, is not based on, on our theology. That it's, it's not based on how well we can kind of figure out the, the deep mysteries of the Bible. Like, his love for us is like a father that, that loves his, his son or his daughter or his newborn. Like, you don't need to figure it out in order to receive the blessing of Adonai. His blessing is not dependent on us figuring it out. And, uh, you know, the way the church works is like somebody figures something out, you know, but, you know, then you figure something out and like, like oh, look at this revelation, and then like the rest of the body goes, I haven't seen that in the Nicene Creed. You know, but the wonderful thing about Adonai is that, that he really can't be placed inside of boundaries. Like, once you put Adonai inside of a boundary, he's going to start... Like, once you start putting him in a little box, he's going to... You know, because Adonai can't be just put into a little box. And that's what religion does, and that's what, like, doctrines and dogmas and theologies they do. They kind of, like, they look at the scripture and they try to understand deep mysteries, and they, they put it into a little a couple of phrases, and they're like, this is it! Here it is! The nature of the infinite God, on paper! You know, and, 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 and you know, and, and, and oh, and then you better not challenge it, because if you challenge it, you're out of here. You know, but God is so much bigger, and thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That your love for me is not dependent. Thank you, Lord, on me understanding it all. Thank you, Adonai. <laughs> that your love for me is not dependent on me figuring it out. You figured me out. Adonai, you have figured it out. And you figured me out. You knitted me. You created me. And Yeshua gets it. Yep. <laughs> so I don't have to. <laughs> Even it says in in Romans eleven, like one of my favorite chapters, because it speaks of Adonai's undying love and promises to Israel, but at the end of it he says, You know what? God has placed everyone under disobedience so we can have mercy to everyone. Which kind of tells me at the end of the thing, at the end of the story, we're going to go, oops. Yeah. I didn't quite get that part right. And I think we're all kind of going to be surprised a little bit. I think that's even the nature of the beast. Yes. I don't mean the beast. I mean that figuratively. You know, like even the people of Israel, they're waiting for Messiah, they're waiting for Messiah, they're waiting for Messiah. And they had this complete... Biblical understanding, the rabbis who study this thing and they know every little jot and tittle, yud and little marking on the Torah. They knew the whole thing and they knew the, every teaching and every teaching that's gotten passed down from, from Moses down to Joshua, down to the prophets, down to the, everybody, to, to the, the rabbis. And they understood this thing in so much depth, so much so that they were waiting for Messiah and in comes Messiah and they didn't recognize him. Because he didn't meet the doctrine of the time. Which was that he was going to come as the mighty warrior and come very similarly to how we all wait for Jesus these days. He's going to come and he's going to kick some butt and all the enemies of God are going to scatter and he's going to reign. You know, and that's what they were waiting for. And then the Lamb of God comes and just throws everybody's theology out the window. So much so that there was another guy who fit the description even better, whose name was Barabbas, who fit the description of the Messiah who was going to kick some butt and kick Rome out of the Holy Land. And 
And at the end they said yes to Barabbas and they said no to Yeshua. But thank you, Adonai, that we don't have to get it right. Because you got it right. Thank you, Adonai, that you somehow placed it in the hearts of the people and said, May his blood, Yeshua's blood, be on us and on our children. And our Father in heaven is going, Yeah! That's the prayer! May his blood be on our children and on our children's children. How crazy is it that the name of Barabbas in the Aramaic is the son of the father? So like they picked the wrong guy, but in the end, there was really kind of no wrong. Because Adonai's plan is so much greater than our understanding. And it's so much greater than our theologies. And we thank you, Lord, that it is that way. We thank you, Adonai, that we know you're going to surprise us in so many ways. Thank you, Adonai, for that. Your love is, is far better than life. Your mercy is so much more than we can even comprehend. Your love for us, your plan for us, your desire for us, what you've done, what you do, what you will do. For those who you love and are called according to your purpose, no eye has seen it. No ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the Lord has prepared. What do you mean no eye has seen? I know the Bible. How do you say I don't get it? I don't know. Talk to the guy who wrote that. That nobody has seen, nobody understands what he has prepared, but by his Spirit. Hallelujah. What a great and mighty and awesome God you are. So much bigger than our theologies, so much bigger than everything. People come into Messianic Judaism and they think that now we're in the truth. Glory, hallelujah. We don't know buck is here. <laughs> I tell you the truth, we don't know squat. In this place, we don't know jack. We don't. Because Adonai is so big, and it's, it's only like human denominations that like figure out a mystery of God, and then they're like, when people don't get it, like, they form their own church and their own denomination. How many Christian denominations are there? Like, I've heard, like, in the tens of thousands. That doesn't make logical sense to me, but that's what I've heard. And this is because, like, somebody gets, like, a little understanding, and it's a little different, and they get, you know, so they kick out of a church, or they want to only want to celebrate with people that kind of get it their way. And now you got this theology, and you know what I gotta tell you, people come here, people come to Messianic Judaism, they come to Mishkan and it's like we got the truth. We ain't got the truth. Sorry to tell you. We're all screwed up. Just like everybody else. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, we're all screwed up. Glory, hallelujah, we're all screwed up. Because if God doesn't love the screw-ups, then he doesn't love anybody. <laughs> Yeshua redeems screw-ups. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua, for redeeming screw-ups like me. So we don't get it. Yeah, we got a glimpse of the, of the Jewish and the Hebrew understanding of, of Yeshua. But even that is so much bigger than what we can even articulate and we even understand talking to a brother over there, and I went to this church once where Susie got this miraculous healing from, from, from multiple sclerosis type symptoms, and, and she was healing allergies, this amazing thing, she's still walking in this healing. You know, because they got this revelation of like of, of, of casting out spirits and, and, the, and the, the spiritual connection of sickness, not everybody gets that, not everybody believes it. But these guys, like they, they have this amazing fruit, people walk out of their healing, I've seen it with my own eyes. But it's just one little bit of the Lord. Do you understand that? It's not like they got the whole big thing and they got a little, one little thing. And we got a little thing. It's one body. It's many parts. Oh Lord, when am I going to start healing the sick? When am I going to start raising the dead? You know what? When your brother in Zimbabwe raises the dead, guess what? You're raising the dead. Because we are one. 
You know what? When your brother or sister in South America goes to some tribe and, and heals somebody, you're healing somebody. You know why? Because it's one body. Yeshua's body. It's Yeshua that's doing the healing. You know when you go like, why can't I heal the sick? What's the matter with my faith? Ananias is saying, it's not you, it's him. And he has a body that's bigger than just you. Work in the gifts that I give you. Not everybody's a healer. Not everybody's an evangelist. Not everybody's a preacher. Not everybody's a... What are the things that Paul says? Not, you know, he even says that. Like, not everybody's a this and not everybody's a that. Sure, ask for more gifts. Ask for more things. Ask for more gifts. God is, is faithful to give. But Adonai sees one. He sees Yeshua. He doesn't see the guy over here, or the girl over here, or the healer over here, or the one that raises the dead over here, or the one that preaches over here, or the one that's good at this, or the musician over here, or the artist over here. He sees one. He sees Yeshua, Hamashiach, and his body, who he is one with. Hallelujah. His body, who he is. Who he is. This is why we're here and we go to people and we see people and we look him in the eye and we say, Shalom Yeshua. Shalom Yeshua. You're so handsome, Yeshua. You're beautiful, Yeshua. You know what? You're one with him. But our doctrines get all upset. Can't say that. We are one with him. And we don't understand it. We don't understand that he said, Father, I give the glory you gave to me. I give to them. You in me, this is Yeshua talking, me in them. We don't understand our unity with the Messiah. We don't understand our oneness with Messiah. We don't understand how, how God has been the whole plan all along for himself to put himself, himself, into his people. So it's God manifesting on earth. It's been the plan since Torah. Since Torah. In the beginning, the Word was God. And the Word is God, the Word was God, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So then the church fathers come hundreds of years after and go, hmm, what does that mean? Let's put it into a creed, into a dogma. Here's the problem. John, Yohanan, the Jew, who wrote the thing when he said in the beginning was the Word, This was the only word that was there at the time. There was no this yet. There was this, the Torah. And he said the word was God, and the word became flesh. And then hundreds of years later, when the councils came together and tried to figure this whole thing out, they try to figure out what it means, but when you separate the Word, who is Yeshua, from the Word, which is Torah, you're going to get something that's going to be a little bit off, I'm sorry to tell you. Because the church fathers that got together to figure this thing out, they didn't want anything to do with Torah. They didn't want anything to do with the Jewish roots of who he is. So much so that the first hundreds of years, Easter was always Passover. But it's documented that they said, we're going we're gonna to remove that, and we're not going to do it according to Passover anymore. We're going to do it our own way. So when you take the Word and you remove Him from the Word, there's going to be a mixture. you got some truth, but you got some not-so-truth. And the Torah is so strongly, it speaks about mixtures, like don't mix the wool and the linen, don't mix the seed with that seed, because the Word of God is pure. And there's mixture, and there's always mixture that comes in, and I'm not saying here, like, as a Messianic rabbi, that the church got all mixture. I'm not saying that, because I'm telling you that there's mixture right here. 
that's just the way it is. That's the way he had it. He had the Jewish people reject Messiah, and then the word goes out to all the nations and they accept Messiah, but they don't understand the word. So again, he puts everybody under obedience so we can have mercy to everyone. Amen. Done, deal. Done deal. But there's so much that we need to understand of our Father and who he is. And you know what? It's so hard because of the Christian understanding of the Word becoming flesh. The God-man. It's so hard to even speak about Jesus to a Jewish person. Because when we look at the pictures of him, you know, with the beard and the long hair, and when we go to a Jewish person and we take a look at the pictures, or a picture of me is not, and we take a look at him and we say, like, there's God. There's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ones who know the Torah, have to reconcile it with what it says. And they have to reconcile it with where it says in Deuteronomy. He's like, remember when I came to you on the mountain, there was no image. Remember. He's like so strong. Like, remember, there's no image. So not a man, not a woman, no animal. Like, remember these things. So we, like, and we have to like recognize, like, you know, like, like, how do you reconcile it? You can't start a theology based on New Testament. It all has to point back down to the Word. So there's so much, just so much understanding and misunderstanding, and I, I can't even go there because I am misunderstanding it. I'm not here to tell to 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 to, to fix your misunderstandings. Because I'm just going to throw more misunderstanding in there. Because I'm all screwed up. And the goal is not to, not to create you in the image of our religion. It's not to create you in my image or the image of Mishkan David. You are created in the image of our Father. Amen. So the yeah, the Jewish people don't understand. Like, 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 the, the, like this guy over here, that's God. They don't understand it. But I'll tell you what they do understand, which is in Torah, that God dwells within the people. That when the person speaks, it's God speaking through them, because that's how they see Moses. In fact, after they came out of the, the, the water, the water's part, and they came, that they came out, and it says the people believed in God and believed in the servant Moses. And there's so many other places in Scripture we've spoken here many times about like how when God came on the mountain and he spoke, I mean, this is the God of the universe. Did you see that galaxy that Paul showed? Like, God is there. Like, he's like, you know, he's spinning that galaxy on his finger. Right? Like, in the news, you'll see stories like, oh, there's a new exoplanet found. You know? Like, God's there, too. He's juggling these exoplanets. You know why this new one, uh, Proxima B, or whatever it was, is spinning around their sun, like, like one every three days? That's because God went like this. At the beginning of time, it's still spinning. You know? Like, so, like, this is God, it's everywhere. So now he comes on the mountain, you know? And he starts sh screaming the Ten Commandments, and there's thunder, and there's lightning, and there's this light, and there's sounds, and there's shofar blasts, and the people are freaking out. They're like, oh my gosh, if this is God, we, how can we have a relationship with him? And then the, the, they, the, the, the guy goes to Moses and says, what he said is good, I'm going to raise up a prophet from amongst your brothers, listen to him. It's always been God's plan to speak through his prophets. And the Jewish people do understand that. They understand the fullness of God dwelling bodily. That they understand the fullness of God dwelling bodily. They understand that, like, when he says, like, the Father and I are one. And I am in him, and I will be in you. And then the world will know. And then the world will know. It is time for the body of Messiah to, to, to go up to the level, to go up to another level. It says mature. It says to grow into yeah. Messiah. To grow into Messiah. To grow into Messiah. The Word that became flesh. Time to grow in to Messiah. It's time to get a fuller understanding of what he meant. What Paul meant when he said, It's no longer I that live, but Messiah that lives in me. 
Zimmi. We need to get to the point where we understand what it means, what Paul always said for me to live is Mashiach, is Messiah, is Christ. We need to get to the point where we understand what he says when John said, as he is. So are we in this world. The Word of God lives in you. It's been the plan from the beginning. That it's not the God who was on the mountain and scared the heck out of people. It's the God that puts himself in to the people. <coughs> so when you speak, it's him speaking through you. Where you step, it's him stepping in you. The writer of the New Testament says that creation awaits the revealing of... Interestingly, it doesn't say the return of a Messiah. Which it does. But it says that creation awaits the revealing of the sons, plural, of God. Who are the sons of God? They're sitting right here. We are so busy looking at each other's faults and looking at our own faults that we're not recognizing the one who is dwelling in the Mishkan and the tabernacles. You see, the Mishkan in the scripture, the, the, the tabernacle was a foreshadow. It was a foreshadow of you. It was the first, the first thing, the first time that God said, I'm going to take myself and I'm going to put myself into earthen vessel so I can be manifest on earth. Because the people, the people were right. It can't just be me screaming from heaven. You look at that, you're going to explode in a moment. So he takes the fullness of who he is and he puts himself in vessels. And he's chosen you to be that vessel. We need to grow, we need to understand, we need to mature into this. for everything that he's done. He's given to us to do. Hallelujah. So Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. The Savior of the world lives in you to save the world. He died on the cross. He was resurrected from the dead. But the next moment when the Spirit was poured out on the people, Yeshua, the man that we see the pictures of, left. He wasn't there for that. He went up to his Father so the Spirit could be poured out on you. So it's no longer you that live. It's Messiah that lives in you. We see through the mirror dimly. The mirror. The mirror. Not just the window. The mirror. Dimly. But soon face to face 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 and the reason that it's dim is because all we see is like the, the, the first Adam in people all we see is like the, the, the flesh in people we see all we see is ourselves is, is the flesh like oh, I'm just such a nasty person and we, and we don't understand we don't understand we don't understand. We don't understand. So 
So today I pray. And the beautiful thing is, we don't have to get it. Glory, hallelujah. But the one that lives within you is greater than the one that is in the world. We spend a lot of our time in the world. How can we not? We live here. And so many times I believe that the people of God... See, everybody has this Barabbas Jesus moment to choose. We all do. In every moment. Daily. Almost hourly. Right now. Who do you choose? The one who fights in the flesh. The one who promises by like battle and war he's going to tear down the enemy. Fight the power that be. Or the one who fights powers and principalities. Mm -hmm. We all have this moment. We all do. And, it, it, and it, I don't know how we do it. It's like, and this is another thing I don't know how to do. How do you become one when there's so much difference in, in people? I'm just going to share what, 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 what's, what's on my heart as, as, a, as, a, as a rabbi, as an overseer of a congregation. See, there used to be this expression, you don't talk religion and politics, but only with your friends. <laughs> Until Facebook came around. <laughs> and now just everybody talks about what they want to talk about. You know? And everybody sees everything that's on your mind goes out and everybody sees what's on your mind. All of a sudden people go, whoa, you believe that? And I'm just going to share this. I'll just, I'll just share this. Like, I, I, I don't get into politics here at all. Okay? But I, I will share that uh, for the majority of my life I voted kind of on the right. Alright? And then I became a believer and um, I came in, I, came, I got saved in a Messianic Jewish synagogue in New Jersey. And uh, I found out that everybody there was pretty much all conservative right wing. So I'm like, okay, believers are all right wing. Woo! -hoo! Okay. So then you get like, okay, you're, you're really strong on abortion. There shouldn't be abortion, and you know, and sexual sins. There shouldn't be gay marriage, and all these things, and any things that have nothing to do with the Bible. Everybody goes on like, oh, we got to lower taxes. We got to be strong on defense, and and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. All of a sudden. I become a rabbi, and now all of a sudden I realize there are people within the body who are extremely left-wing. And we're, I, we know, I, I know what, that all Christians are like, we want lower taxes. Now all of a sudden there are like, I'm finding believers, strong believers, going, oh no, 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 we need to raise taxes and give them to the poor. That's the Jesus thing to do. And then you got the strong right wing conservatives over here going, we gotta shut our borders to the Muslims. And now all of a sudden I'm finding this like people over here in the body of Messiah, believers, going, no, we have to open the borders because we need to love our neighbor. And I'm not saying what's right or what's wrong. That's in no way my place to say what's right or what's wrong. But I, but I ask Adonai, I say, Adonai, how can we be one? How can we be one when there's such strong worldview differences? Because I know Adonai, 